Hi everyone, uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, tuning the selection of compiler flags for GCC. Uh, this is something you might have met before. Um, so I'd like to uh, introduce some people that haven't to uh, the world of iterative compilation and perhaps remind those uh, that have already heard of it that it exists. <laughs> uh, I'd also be interested to know uh, people are using it themselves. Um, so here we go. Um, so the problem is we have many different optimization flags that we can uh, select on the command line and the choice of those uh, can significantly impact the performance, code size, energy consumption of your program. Anything that uh, the compiler can influence and we can measure, we can target with, these, uh, with this selection. Uh, but this is a difficult problem because uh, the, uh, the flags have interactions with each other and they're often not well known interactions. So there's a large search and it's intractable to uh, do a complete search of all of those combinations. Um, this, this has been researched a lot. So it started off with uh, search techniques. These are iterative compilation techniques. So the way this works is for each program, you uh, choose a set of flags, compile and measure the whatever you're interested in, so measure the code size, um, keep doing this, and take the best configuration that you got. Now, the challenge here is how do you choose those flags? And various methods have been proposed for that, uh, starting with the simplest, so uh, a random selection of flags. Uh, which in the past has held up pretty well against some of the uh, supposedly smarter methods. <laughs> um, and th this is great, it gives you good results. And if you really care about the code size or performance of your program, then absolutely go for this. Uh, spend that time and find the configuration that gives you the best. Um, but we don't always have that time. so. Um, there's also some research which uh, evolved from this, which was to use machine learning to try and predict the best set of flags. And that's great for the, uh, for the uh, end user. Um, so if you're compiling lots of programs and you don't have time to put the effort in, uh, then perhaps you can uh, run this through a classifier and get a prediction. But it turns out that's a, a very difficult problem. And uh, one of the big challenges is, well, firstly, having enough benchmarks, <laughs> um, but also finding the right features. So what is it about a program that means we should enable or disable a particular optimization? So in my PhD, I looked at uh, trying to generate new features or new rules by analyzing GIMP IR. And uh, I kind of went from a, there was a world where people were using a lot of uh, features, so feature vectors, which you extract numerical statistics about programs and try and make decisions based on that, but that loses a lot of information. Now, the problem I had with all the Gimple IR was there was too much information, so how do I make rules out of this now? Um, but there were a few rules that came up that, that were interesting, but one of the uh, more interesting or more useful observations I made was often you can make uh, platform specific but program independent, independent decisions and that can allow you to uh, create new optimization levels for, uh, for your target platform. So this is uh, kind of an adapt adaptation of iterative compilation. Um, this idea is not new in itself, so the way it works is rather than the uh, rather than the objective being to improve the performance of a single program, now you're trying to satisfy several programs. So this is saying, can we find a single configuration that um, satisfies a whole set of programs? And if you have a large enough and a representative enough set of programs, then uh, you should be able to create a better optimization level, so a better OS or a better O3 for your target platform. Uh, but I think in some ways this has been overlooked. So 
when I look back at the research, this, this idea, this was around in 2008, and I'm sure people were probably doing, that, doing it before that, uh, uh, but not necessarily publishing it. Um, but we have this kind of the era of iterative search, and then we go into the era of uh, machine learning-based um, compiler tuning. And what I haven't seen is people comparing to this approach of creating a, a new platform-specific optimization level and comparing it to the machine learning uh, approaches. And during my PhD, I, I did that, and I find that often just tuning for the platform got you uh, at least half the way, and sometimes more. So, uh, so at least half the way to if you'd searched on that program. Now, compared to the machine learning methods, it was actually competitive and sometimes outperformed them and was more reliable. Uh, because the problem with, if you're trying to uh, predict flags, then you might make a really bad prediction and get, get a lot worse than your baseline OS or O3. Um, another great advantage of um, this approach is you can test this configuration and then send it out into the wild. Now, because we can't test, we, we can't evaluate all configurations to see if they will speed up our program, we also can't evaluate them all to see if they will break our program. Um, but if we have a single configuration and we say, okay, this is the Cortex-M3 configuration or the RISC-532 configuration, we can run that through the GCC test suite, add it to the, the uh, list of torture tests, and that gives us some, uh, some confidence that it's not breaking things. So I have a, a particular favorite um, approach to iterative compilation. It's called combined elimination. I'm not, uh, people may have heard of it. Um, it was introduced in 2006, um, but I've not seen people use it particularly since then. And it may be to do with a paper from 2007 which showed that random did better than combined elimination. Uh, but in my experience, it, it actually works very well and it, it can find configurations a lot faster and, and it finds better configurations than other approaches. But there is no one best way. So your best approach is probably to collect a lot of different search techniques and try them all um, and keep going with the one that, that's giving you the best results, which, it, which there are tools which allow you to do this. I'll talk about if I have time. <laughs> so uh, here's my experience of running this on uh, RV32. Um, so for this, I threw all of the GCC flags that GCC told me it had. Uh, these are binary flags only in this case. And I got a 9% speed up uh, improvement in code size overall. And that's targeting individual programs. Now, if you try and satisfy all of the programs with one configuration, um, you, you can get 6% of those improvements. And that's what I've generally found is you can, you can achieve about half or more of the gains just by uh, tuning to the platform. Now this leads on to, can we start improving the optimization levels? So this is the optimization I got out which satisfies the, um, the 19 benchmarks from, from mBench. Uh, I don't have time to discuss these and I, I also haven't had time to investigate them in detail, but there's some investigation there to find, uh, are these just no good for the platform and we should disable them? Or is there something we can be doing better in those optimizations? Um, so seeing as combined animation didn't appear to be available uh, just to pick up and use, I've added it to OpenTuner. It's currently in my fork and I'm uh, working on getting that into the, the, ma the main repo uh, soon. So I think I'm just coming towards the end of my time. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll, we'll take a question for Craig while uh, Maxim switches over the um, slides. Hi. 
I'm kind of an old timer and, and the details are fuzzy in my mind and I don't like somebody might like Frank might remember this better than me, but like in the late nineties it seems like there was a GCC tool called the super optimizer that was an iterative. I don't know if one of the other guys remembers this, but it seemed like it was do you remember that, Nick? I I wrote something similar but it was just script. Yeah. Um and it was it was an early effort like this that the uh Well, exactly right. right. Yeah. The GCC is big around that. I think was a Covia analysis compiler optimization bio evolutionary analysis. Super optimizer was something different. And there has been more recent work on super optimizer. Yeah. But that's I want to generate an optimal code sequence for this thing, and then I'll stick it in my compiler as an optimization. That's right. We, we did some work on that at Embercosm before I joined, actually. Um, but I just wanted to pick up on Acovia as well. So there have been various tools over the year, and I did have a look on the mailing list to see, to see, if, um, see if pe how much people seem to be using this. And I see sporadic mentions. And often what I saw was, there was this tool that exists. Uh, I don't think it's there anymore. It's not maintained anymore. But there's this new tool, and there's this new tool. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, have you considered having some way of profiling or, or, or um, characterizing the program and then selecting the options for that? So if it's a loops heavy program, you'd have one set of options. But if it's a different kind of op program that has, uh, does, does something else, you'd have a different selection of options. Yeah, so I, I think that would, it would overlap slightly with the machine learning approach, but be, maybe a, a coarser classification. And yeah. I'm out of time, man. So. Well, yeah, we're, we're out of time, and um, we have got the RISC V boff immediately afterwards, so some of these questions are going to come up there. And I commend my talk on super optimization in Prague three years ago. Um,